Hey Sagittarius, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, an angel therapy practitioner, a Reiki master, and an empowerment coach. And today I want to talk about your September horoscope. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, video, I'm looking at this from whole sign Western astrology. I, as an intuitive astrologer, believe the moon is the most important sign because the moon is, represents our emotional body. And as humans, we are emotional beings. We manifest on what we believe about ourselves, which comes out through our thoughts and through our emotions. I also believe that the rising sign is on a par with the moon as it is our perception and how we view the world. And then I think our sun comes into play. And if you have a stellium, which is three or more planets, especially if they're personal planets in one sign or house, four on a stricter level is indicating a very um, purposeful and intentional dynamic within your chart that your soul wants to address within this lifetime. So what I'm going to do is I've picked out a few things that I think are important for the month of September 2022. And again, this is for Sagittarius moon, rising sun and stelliums. The first place I want to start is on September 3rd, when Mars will be at eight degrees Gemini and beginning its pre-retrograde shadow period. The shadow period is when the planet starts to slow down. Now, it isn't going to go technically retrograde until the 30th of October. But as we see the planet slow down, I don't know that I necessarily think that this will um, slow down motion because Mars moves very quickly and Gemini is the sign ruled by Mercury, which zips around the zodiac, dispensing information and, you know, our everyday activities. So what I think is going to happen is this is going to be an opportunity as Mars will be spending um, basically the rest of the year and until January 12th, when 2023, when it will start its forward motion and actually begin its post retrograde shadow period. So we're going to see this influence going on for quite some time. Gemini represents our everyday activities, our thoughts. It represents um, a persuasive way of, of speaking. It represents our teammates, our workmates, our roadways, our escalators, our sidewalks. Um, it has a curious energy, wanting to know a little bit about a lot of things. Um, it's what we, it's our self-talk. It is the things that we absorb through what we watch on television and the media. Um, and Gemini kind of rules that monkey mind a little bit, the mind that gets a little bit caught up in the rules and the regulations um, versus breaking through the rules to decide whether or not they work for me. Um, Mars represents assertion and in some ways it represents the warrior. Well, that's the biggest definition it gets. Mars is a pioneer. Mars is assertive. Mar Mars can think without acting. And in the sign of Gemini, it could think very um, or be very reactionary. So together, we're going to see a lot of quick motion, a lot of rapid thought. And on an unconscious level, this could represent people acting unconsciously in an aggressive way. So now let's get to how this affects you, because this is in your seventh house of partnerships. And when I talk about partnerships, um, I'm talking about not just um, intimate partnerships, but also professional partnerships. The seventh house rules um, courts, it rules policemen, it rules justice, fairness, harmony. Now we supersede the Sagittarian energy, oh, sorry, Sagittarius, this is Gemini energy on your seventh house. So this is going to be about um, a busyness about partnerships, about communications within partnerships. What do I think about my partnerships? How do I um, speak within my partnerships? How do I commun communicate within those partnerships? And a certain awareness of if I am behaving aggressively or if I'm giving my power away. The thing that Spirit showed me about the theme of this Mars retrograde is it is attraction versus assertion. Um, Mars is very assertive and sometimes in a way that doesn't really give life to other people's um, feelings. 
Gemini is a social sign. Gemini by nature is, is very flirtatious. So it likes to enroll others in its ideas. So here we have to see a melding of these two things coming together where Mars starts to learn how its energy lands on other people. So for Sagittarius, this is gonna be how does Mars uh, play out within your partnership sector? How are you communicating with your partners? How are you communicating with the people that have, you know, um, a certain amount of judicial energy over you. Sometimes we're in partnerships with people who um, it appears to be an equal partnership, but it's not really an equal distribution of duties or of authority. So I think this is gonna be for Sagittarius, an opportunity for you to assert yourself in a very balanced way about what's important to you in your partnerships. And I think it's going to be an opportunity for you to utilize inspiring and persuasive conversation um, versus um, asserting any sort of authority over another person. Sagittarius by nature rules the ninth house. It rules the Supreme Court, where the seventh house rules more like civil courts. So, and also Gemini and Sagittarius are a natural access. So here we're looking at Sagittarius being the first house, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. And in relation to uh, Gemini in the seventh house. So this is an opportunity to see and represent um, an opportunity for people to go into foreign places, the Sagittarian element in your everyday communities by representing um, an attraction dynamic of energy versus asserting yourself on others. Okay, then on the fifth, we have Venus entering Virgo. And when Venus enters Virgo, you know, it's not her most sexy place. This is where she kind of represents love through acts of service and practicality and dependability. Venus by nature rules our financial body, our physical beauty, our possessions and our things. So here we're going to see how um, Venus starts in your 10th house. This is for your 10th house. Venus is going to indicate, and I think this kind of even plays a little bit with the idea of Mars going retrograde in your seventh house. And even though we're not going to see that immediately, we're going to start to see how your public, um, the 10th house is the public view where you're most visible to the outside world. And I think Venus is going to indicate for Sagittarius an, a sense of self-care and balance between you know, how you interact with others and how you take care of yourself, sort of um, using Venus's energy of, of what is my self-worth? What do I believe about myself? What do I believe about my ability to make money to provide comfort for myself? I think this is going to become more visible to your community, to the people around you. You don't have to be a public figure for your 10th house to be activated. You could work in a team environment and have people seeing how you show up and healthy boundaries is part of that, how you show up. Um, Venus is going to stay in Virgo until the 29th of September. At the same time, Mercury is going to be going retrograde in Libra and then scooting back into Virgo. It's there, they're not quite going to touch each other, but there is a dynamic of how I think and I speak um, and how what I believe about myself that comes into play here. So um, for my Sagittarius moon, rising sun and stelliums, Venus and Virgo in your 10th house is going to give you an opportunity to implement healthy boundaries, to implement a sense of uh, self-worth when it comes to your ability to create and doing so also represents a sense of leadership for those around you. On the ninth, we're going to see Mercury start its retrograde in Libra at eight degrees, and it is going to go all the way until October 2nd, where it will uh, turn direct at 24 degrees Virgo. For you, this is going to be in your 10th and 11th house, meaning Libra is your 11th house, which is your networks, your um, the internet, your so hopes and dreams. Uh, it represents humanity, the 11th house. It represents 
the big picture of things. Uh, it represents science and innovation and technology in general. Now we put Libra energy on top of that. It's how do we foster harmony and peace and, and cooperation within our networks. So this is gonna be a real opportunity for Sagittarius to use Mercury. And Mercury by nature is Gemini's ruler and this is your opposite sign so again we're going to give it's going to give an opportunity to take everyday conversation everyday thought and sort of see how do I use that my language how do I use my how do my thoughts represent the truth of my belief and the truth of what I believe about my self-worth because I think all these things are going to come into play and sort of interconnect we're talking um, Mars going retrograde in Gemini, which is a social sign. We're talking Mercury going retrograde in Libra, which is a social sign. And we're talking about Venus entering Virgo, which is a sign of service, which also puts us in the public eye, or at least within the communal eye of how we are of service to others, our employers, and also how we take care of our own health. Um, on the 10th, we're going to have a full moon in Pisces. I'll be doing a separate video for that. On the 22nd of September, the sun will move into Libra. And on the 23rd, Mercury will make its retrograde back into Virgo. So uh, we're going to kind of see a crossing over of the sun and Mercury going like this, which may illuminate in some respects what's going on in your mind. On the 25th, we're going to have a new moon in Libra at two degrees. I, again, will do a separate video for that. And on the 29th, Venus will move into Libra, her, uh, the sign that she hosts, that is her home, her residence, where she enjoys being. So that's, that's always very, very favorable. And again, this is your, um, Libra is your 11th house. So we should see things start to, um, feel more warm and fuzzy in the network and in, in everything that's been sort of transpiring throughout the month of September, I think you're going to start to see people responding to you in a way that feels very favorable and starts to demonstrate their uh, appreciation and value for who and what you are. Now, on the same day, the 29th, the Mercury retrograde will be at 24 degrees Virgo making an opposition to Neptune retrograde at 23 Pisces and making a trine to Pluto at 26 degrees Capricorn. So there could be something where in your work environment, in um, in how you're treating your body, you get to sort of uh, take a look at that Neptune tends to represent rose-colored glasses, a little bit of illusion. Uh, sometimes it represents a uh, a bit of deception. Uh, and so I think here you might see an opportunity for you to, um, I want to put the word individualize. I want to take the idea that Sagittarius by nature is a spiritual sign. Mercury is what I think. And uh, in Virgo, it's my service. And Neptune is a very spiritual sign. So you may see yourself starting to uh, redefine how you view yourself and spirituality. You also may find yourself being a little tired of spirits. It may be feeling like a little much and you just want to sort of get your feet solid on the ground. The trine uh, between Virgo and Pluto is going to, um, Pluto is always challenging. You know, it really is. It's, it's a dig deep sort of energy, but the trine aspect of it is very favorable in when I'm willing to be of, of, really uh, dig deep in authenticity between uh, is my service because that Virgo dynamic again is going to be service. Mercury is my everyday activities, my work activities, my teammate activities, the things I do and involve with my siblings, you know, it very much my everyday activities. So I want to look at it as Pluto is asking me, is my service out of balance? And am I being too much of service? where there is a there is a, a growing feeling of of burden or am i standing in balance so that i can be liberated and rewrite the structure of of my service so that both parties are creating a, a win win for lack of a better term i think that's going to be uh pretty powerful mercury moves fairly quickly but whenever pluto's involved and neptune for this matter we're going to see somewhere where there is an illusion or a foggy situation 
uh, being broken open and an opportunity to make a different choice, which actually serves the Phoenix rising from the ashes. So that's it for September 2022 for my Sagittarius rising moon, sun and stelliums. My name is Terry Hunter. I am available if you'd like to do a reading with me. I do both astrology as well as angel readings. Uh, which is sort of like a, a check in with your momentum on your intentions and your creations and spirit giving you advice for how to move the story forward. My information is below in the description. And please join me live every Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific time, uh, where we look at the weekly transits and we get advice from spirit from there. Thanks so much. I'll be back next month with another monthly. Have a wonderful September Sagittarius. Bye bye.